My name's Fiona Percy and I coordinate the adaptation learning program implemented by Care International in Africa. Um, yesterday we had session five at the CBA8 conference on how adaptation finance can reach the most vulnerable um, people to climate change. Um, we ran this through interactive group discussions and that generated a set of collective issues and messages that were co-generated by about 70-something participants. Um, some of the key issues that came out were, first of all, the need to understand not only vulnerabilities, but the um, different vulnerabilities um, within and among communities and the ways in which that difference affects their ability and adaptive capacity um, and the responses that are needed from community-based adaptation. Um, issues around the need for community empowerment at that local level so that um, different vulnerable groups can actually determine their own priorities and finance be available for them to act on their own priorities and for strengthening their, their own adaptive capacity. Um, the need also for combining their local knowledge with more scientific and external knowledge to come out with um, solutions and also to look at um, climate specific information and climate specific um, interventions that need to be done. Um, there were a lot of issues around how do we really understand and reach those who are most vulnerable and address exclusion and work towards more, more equity and to support local resource mobilization. But there's also a recognition that vulnerabilities are changing, communities are changing, climate change impacts um, are unexpected, people need to manage risk and uncertainty. And that can result in, in completely changing, transforming livelihoods. Um, and how do we address um, the differences when they're changing in that respect? Also that there are other drivers of vulnerability that have been there for a long time, very entrenched vulnerabilities, um, poor governance, exclusion, um, gatekeepers even within the community, which are barriers if we do not address, then all our adaptation work may still not reach the most vulnerable. So a couple of key advocacy messages that emerged around financing um, that can reach the most vulnerable. The first was very much around flexibility in funding mechanisms and that funding is needed for locally determined priorities and for the process of decision making at the local level over time and recognizing this is going to change over time. Um, so we need flexibility over time and we need flexibility to um, allow for decision making um, at the local level as the, the, they are made. Um, and this, this funding needs to be better coordinated with, with other systems and allow for funding of other systems, for example, climate information systems to make climate forecast and information more accessible to the most vulnerable, but also linked to early warning systems and DRR um, and, and private sector and, and market systems. Um, the second message is really that in addition we need to um, ensure there is funding and incentives for safeguards. Um, it's um, in terms of really addressing the issue of exclusion and ensuring equity and inclusion. We need safety nets, we need to link our work with social protection to ensure that when there are emergencies and extreme events the most vulnerable are reached in terms of the, the relief and responses to that. Um, so direct access is vital, we also need the local mobilisation, we also need these systems and, and um, funding to incentivise these safeguards which can also link to insurance products.